Good morning, this is Ron Brown. I'm going to uh, start a new video uh, series here, and uh, I'm going to um, use the uh, tools that are available in HGSI, and probably only in HGSI. And I'm going to, uh, this is the subject of this series, creating a watch list in HGS Investor, determining the characteristics of leading stocks using HGSI tools. And uh, that's what the, uh, playlist is going to be based upon. I'm going to take you through a series of steps and sh show you how to do this. The market is your teacher. Never forget that. You can read other opinions and so on, but always look to the market to determine what's going on. Okay, as always, as usual, any stock index or ETF mentioned in this present is, presentation is not a recommendation to buy or sell. All trading strategies are used at your own risk. If you don't have high growth stock uh, software after viewing this series, you may want to get it and just go to highgrowthstock.com and uh, request the 30 day trial. You don't have to enter any credit card information. Now I've made some notes in uh, my uh, OneNote uh, program and it's this page is uh, entitled Characteristics of Leading Stocks, and I'm going to go through these. I won't get these all done uh, in a uh, single video probably, but I'll see how the, what happens. I'm going to uh, go to a screen that you have in your files if you're in uh, my Insider Club. It's called Percentage Return Factors, End of Day. I'm going to sort on the 21-day performance since we're about uh, one, a little over a month in. So that should uh, bring up the stocks to the top of the list that uh, have performed best over the last month. I'm going to make a group of the top, top 50 stocks. Then I'm going to look at the warehouse characteristics of those stocks. Then I will make a filter from those top 50 stocks. And then I'm going to run the filter against these groups that I've been saving over the uh, years. I uh, keep a year's worth of data on uh, uh, stocks and groups up and so on, best of Woodward and Brown. And uh, I'll go through these groups, or I will select them for beginning January 1st. And we'll just see which of these groups are appearing in the group inclusion report. And that'll give us a pretty good idea of uh, where we should prospect in the future. Now I'm going to do the long side and then I'll, as I go through this series, I will do the same thing on the short side. The, so, the long side, most of you are long side traders, so that's what I'm going to concentrate on, but uh, I think I'll uh, go ahead and do the uh, short side also. Now if you have Snagit or uh, you could use a Windows utility, you could take a uh, screenshot of this list here and then uh, if you want to run this uh, simulation yourself you can just follow these steps. Okay here's uh, my uh, screen layout that I'm going to be using. I'm using the designer of course and uh, a chart. This chart that I'm using is my 2B chart. Uh, I'm using the black version I uh, want to use it because it contains the 3, 6, and 18-day exponential moving averages. It also uh, has uh, the uh, uh, pocket pivot volume spikes in it, plus the volume point of control. We can see the 3, 6 crossover and so on. So I think this chart will, suffi will suffice. Plus, if you look up here at the top, it has the uh, industry group in cyan and the relative strength to the industry in green. So if if the cyan is flat like it is here and the green is going up, that means this stock, which is NVIDIA, is outperforming its group. Now getting over here to the warehouse view, if you open my number one folder and scroll all the way down here at number 16, I put this view in a month or so ago. I haven't really done much with it yet, but that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to click on that, and that is percentage return factors end of day only. It says end of day only, but since then I have put in a column for intraday one day change. So if you use this during the day, 
you'll see if this stock's up or down. But Okay, so let's uh, make this full screen. I said I was going to sort on the percentage price change uh, 21 days. Normally, the raw combo is set on percentage change from the beginning of the year. But you have all these columns here. One day, beginning of the week, five day, 15 day, 21 day, quarter, and beginning of the year. So I could sort on beginning of the year or 21 days. I'm going to use... Uh, 21 days were slightly over the beginning of the year, but it's really not going to make much difference, I don't think. Uh, uh, there's a few that uh, that jump up here. Now the problem here is uh, if I use this list, you can see that this is dominated by biotech stocks. I'm only going to use the top 50 stocks, and it's too heavily weighted towards the biotech stocks. So. Let's get away from this and let's go into the S&P 1500 stocks. And you can see we have a much better mixture right here. Now, these are the stocks that uh, are uh, most heavily traded. I'm going to make that statement um, because I think it's, you know, the fund managers and, and so on, uh, they like to pay a lot of attention to uh, what's going on in stocks that are in the S&P group. So... I'm just going to use these or this, and I'm going to then make a group of this. I'm going to uh, call this leading leaders last 21 days. And I'm going to limit this to 50 stocks. And I can make an index of this, but you can see that I've cut this down to 50 stocks. And there's a lot of familiar names in here if you look down the list. And uh, this is the list that I'm uh, going to use. But let's take a look at some of the characteristics. I want to bring this up. Uh, an arrow. You can see that I don't have my uh, Wyckoff indicators in here because that's a one-day deal. I'm looking for the longer term. So... This is the days since the crossover, the three crossing the six. This is the volume point of control. This is what's important, relative strength. You can see how important relative strength is to these stocks. Most of them are green. There's only one that has a 36 or a red ranking. Uh, let's look at the percentage price change over the 21 days. These are the percentage gains or the percent gained. So looking at this, so far we can see that the uh, relative strength is very important. And I'm going to scroll over to the right and let's see what else we can figure out here. Looking down this list, you can see that the accumulation, if it's A or B, that's important. This is what it is today. That's why I'm going to scan this list against the last 30 days of my group so we can see when these were coming up. Now, these are the uh, VPA trends. You can see there's a lot of green here. This is EMA fan up. Most of these have the fan up. Down to this point, uh, 41 of them have the fan up, and these here do not have the fan up at that point. Let's go a little bit further here. The characteristics. Oh, here's what I'm looking for. I want to go back here. EPS rank. How important is that? Well, not that important. There are, what, 11 that are in the green, and then uh, here's the yellow and the red. The number of red on the EPS rank is 24, or about half of the EPS was not a factor. How about the group rank? Group rank above 80, 17 of them, 14 of them have red group rankings. So the relative strength feature out of the ERG components is the most important part. You can see that if I click on ERG, only 12 of them have an ERG of 240 or greater. There are many here in the yellow and in the red 
there are eight that are in the lower end of the org. So uh, it doesn't make any sense, really, just to scan on org. Yeah, you can find some winners here. There's 12 of these leading stocks that have an high, high erg, but there's also 38 that don't have a high erg. So that can't be uh, an important component. Now let's look over here. Gross profit margin. Let's look at net profit margin. Well, yeah, these, these kind of factor in. Long-term debt to equity. There are several that have no debt. There's one with huge debt, tenant health care. A return on equity. Well, that's a pretty decent return on equity for most of them. And the ROE to PE, ah, I don't pay much attention to that. So anyway, these are the factors that I put into the view. Uh, just looking at this, the most important factor is relative strength, and we've known that. But how long have these stocks had a high RS rank? Well, hopefully we can find that out when I run some scans here. The most important consistent characteristic, I should say, is an RS rank of 80 or above. Going back over here to the right, let's sort on group rank. Looking at the stocks that have a green group rank, all but two of them have an RS rank of 80 or above. And let's look at current accumulation. A accumulation, every one of them but this one have a RS rank of 80 or above. I mean, this is all good information, but you really can't do much with it uh, because uh, we're, we're looking for a way to find these stocks as they're moving, and I'm going to uh, do that next. I'm going to sort on symbol, and I'm going to save list as, and Leaders last 21 days. I'll just save that in my download folder. And then I'll click on the filters. And I'll just go in here and type SYM. And symbol list is right here. I will edit the symbol list. And I'm going to clear the filter. And I'm going to load the list. Leaders last 21 days, that's in my downloads folder. And that loads the 50 stocks that are in this list into a filter. And then I'm going to say OK. Next, I'm going to go into my designer. And the filter, you can see the filter that's applied. If you, if you look up here at the top, is the symbol list. I'm going to click on the group inclusion report. And the only group that's checked so far is leaders last 21 days. Now, I'm going to bring this over here into the screen so you can see it. And I'm going to go into my non-index groups. These are the groups that I update every day. So when I say the add-on is updated, that's what I mean. These are updated. So we're going to go to Stocks and Groups Up. I'm going to click on January and February. And then before I, after I select all these other groups, I'm going to select Check Children. Okay, let's do Best of Woodward and Brown. January and February. Top raw combo stocks. This is going to find, uh, I don't have that in there, but I wanted it in there, so I have to add that to the list because this is going to locate the stocks with a, a decent raw combo. Okay, I paused the video and I put it in there. Top 100 raw combo. These stocks are driven by a combo ranking which looks for high relative strength stocks. Okay, and then I'll do VPA flags. I'll do this January and February.
top 50 group inclusion report. I, I capture my own group inclusion report every day. And then I'm going to do market leaders. Just so I don't confuse you, I pause the video and I rearrange these to, to match my list over here. I had them out of order. So uh, this is market leaders. And now uh, you can see that I'm going to go into can slim type stocks. These are stocks that uh, have a 20% uh, minimum earnings and, and revenue growth. The instant watch list. These are groups that are created uh, every day with certain characteristics. Perfect speculator history. I'll do this on uh, for January and February. And then finally, money flow end of day. And I'll do January and February. And then I check the children. And that checks all of the stocks that are underneath these categories uh, that uh, I selected. Now just reviewing this or looking at this group, group inclusion report, I have applied the filter, the symbol list of those 50 stocks. And I'm going to save this report to the file. There's no need to make a group uh, from this report because I'm using those 50 stocks and I already have a group created. So let's go ahead and run this. And uh, I'll call this, I'll overwrite a leader's file that I had. And what this does is it takes all of these groups that I've selected and uh, the stocks, what NVIDIA is on top, that's no surprise. But what it does is it goes into those groups and gives us the date when the stock appeared within those groups. For example, I'll bring my uh, arrow back up here. NVIDIA started appearing on uh, January 5th and, uh, and stocks and groups moving up. It appeared multiple times. In the best of Woodward and Brown on the 23rd. So it appears generally appears here first or in money flow. On the 3rd, VPA signal. I guess I made uh, my arrow bigger. Uh, top 50 group inclusion report clear back on the 5th. Look at all the times it appeared in the top 50. And these are not identified, but uh, these are uh, the market uh, leading groups or the market leaders group. And then CanSlim. Look at all these CanSlim. Now, it, there, I have several CanSlim sub categories like stock setting up fan up under can slim that was back on the third so let's just take a look at nvidia i'll get this out of the way since i've run everything nvidia is right here let's go back and looking at it on the third right here if you look down in this corner or I could bring this window up, I guess. Put it over here, and it says right here, the third. I'll bring the arrow back up. So here is the third on a Wednesday, which is right here. And that was the setting up can slim. And then you can see that it crossed over here. And big volume came into it right here where these blue bars are. Those are the pocket pivot volume indicators. So demand increased exponentially on these days. Look how quiet it was through here during accumulation. And then it broke out. And these are all continuation bars right here. Stayed The three stayed well above the six all this time. And it ran from... Looks like around 500 up to where it is now, 150 points or more. So amazing. And this was a leading stock. It was appearing. Let's go back and look at it. In all of these groups, it's a can slim stock because the earnings are so great. It's a box stock. It appeared in the box stocks. 
It appeared in speculator stocks. Uh, perfect speculator. These are stocks that are breaking out to either new 52-week highs or three and a quarter year high. There's also a folder stocks within 5% of 52-week high. Now money flow in. Where did it start showing up in the money flow? On the 5th, the 8th, and the 9th. There's a couple of money flow groups here. One of them uh, is the original one I was using, but this is the one I'm using primarily now. These stocks No, I take that back. I selected the wrong. These are the money flow groups that I was using before, and I still am. But I created the new money flow groups. And uh, I didn't start doing this until the middle of January. But I'm looking for percentage change. A percentage range has to be above 50, and the volume has to be above the 90-day moving average volume. So this is my newest money flow group. But I still save these other ones. And you can see going clear back to the 5th of the month, it was showing up in the money flow group. So let's take a look at that. Uh, here's the 3rd, 4th, right when it crossed, when the 3 crossed, the 6, I believe, yes. That's when it appeared in the money flow group, in addition to all these other groups. So you can see a lot, all the characteristics of this stock, and there are many. Now let's look at some other stocks here. Uh, PANW, Palo Alto Networks. It went back to the 8th of January. Stocks and groups moving to the upside. VPA signals on the 5th. Top 50 group inclusion report on the 9th. Uh, market leaders on the 10th, can slim, clear back to the 2nd and 3rd, and here it is setting up on the 3rd. Here is stock setting up, fan up right here. Let's go back to the 3rd on PANW, take a look at it. So here is the 8th, here's the 5th, here's the 4th, here's the 3rd. Why did it appear on this? Because it is, the 3 is under the 6, the green's under the red. You can see it down here, it's negative, but there was a bullish candle. That's one of my criteria in the filter, so it's starting to set up. And then after that, you can see no supply. Strength seen returning, plus an effort to rise, an effort to rise here, and then it took off. Look at the volume pocket pivot information and the volume point of control down here. Now, I didn't uh, look at NVIDIA. I did look at the NVIDIA group, I think. So here, the group was flat. As you can see, the stock was flat. It wasn't outperforming uh, the industry group. At, at this point, both the group started going up, but... This stock was going up faster than the group, so the green line is going up, so it was outperforming its group. Now I'm going to look through this list here. Here's a stock I'm not familiar with, DV. Let's bring it up. Application software. Now let's go back to this. I'll do a Control F and type in DV and that's not the one I want, so I'll click on this. Down arrow, it takes me to the stock. You can see this didn't have nearly as many signals. Stocks and groups moving to the upside on the January 17th. On the 9th, box stocks, perfect speculator stocks on the 22nd. Money flow in on the 17th. So let's go look at the 17th. That's when it first started appearing on these, on the money flow groups. So DV on the 17th. 
there it is right there. It's pretty obvious where it appeared. There was a volume pocket pivot. The V pocket fired clear back here, and the three crossing the six had fired back here, but this is where the money really started flowing into it, and then it's moved up. But uh, I'm sure, I and I'm not using the data from before the first year, but I'm sure it was showing up in some of these groups back here uh, earlier in the year. But like I said, I'm only using from the top stocks from the first of the year. Okay. How about, uh, well, let's just look. Well, Meta. Why well, should we look at Meta? Crossed over 19 days ago. Both on the uh, three crossing the six and the VPOC. And we all know what happened here. Okay, so that crossover was back here at this point at 364. Would have been a great time for a uh, some debit spreads um, because laying out this kind of capital is well beyond uh, uh, most of us uh, in the group. So let's go into or back to this. And I'll put Meta in. Control F brings the search box up, and then I can type in Meta. Here it takes us to Meta, and let's see what all happened here. It started appearing in the stocks and groups clear back on the 8th. VPA signals on the 9th. Top 50 on the 10th, but it really had didn't appear in the top 50 very often, did it? But here in the market leaders, clear back on the second. And then perfect speculator, clear back on the second also. Money flow in. Okay, that didn't happen until the eighth. Let's look at it on the eighth. Right here is where it starts showing up in the money flow and a day later this is the tenth or two days later there's a ninth two days later there was an effort to rise it hesitated had a low volume test these low volume tests are, are often really good signals after a move and then a consolidation low volume test another one right here and then no no demand, effort to rise, and then a shakeout before the earnings, and uh, you all know what happened with it. So you can see that these characteristics uh, are pretty good for these uh, top 50 stocks. So at some point, uh, I'm not going to do it in this video, we'll incorporate um, a lot of these fields uh, into a filter, and uh, that'll be maybe my next project. But I, I hope to uh, add several videos to this. But let's go back. I'm not, I'm not finished yet. I want to show you some other, th other things here. Stocks and groups moving to the upside. Let's see how prevalent that is. I'll highlight that. Do a control C. Go over here. Do a control V. And if you look down here, all of these yellow areas means that the stocks were showing up in Woodward and Brown stocks and groups moving to the upside. These are old groups that I've been using for years. The money flow is relatively new. Now, if you click on this, it takes you to the stock. And click on that one. You scroll down and see what the symbol is. So, A-N-E-T started appearing on the 8th and so on all the way down through the 30th. Let's try something else here. Let's clear this out. Let's just type the put the word can slim in there. How often does that appear? Going up to the top. P A N W. I need to scroll all the way up here. Oh, NVIDIA, okay. 
Go to every one of these blocks over here. PANW. ANET. These are all CanSlim type stocks. Dynatrace. FIX. So you just go down the list. You just click on the block and it'll take you directly there and show you what stocks meet that criteria. Now I'll do one more and you'll get the idea here. Let's look for I'm just going to use money flow in. Control F brings this up. Control V paste money flow in and then you just click on that and it takes you to the stock that's showing the money flow in. And I imagine every one of these stocks has money flow in in those groups. So that's why I like that money flow in user group. Let's go all the way down to the bottom here. I was trying to just click down there, but I'll have to drag it. Okay, now here's a stock, life science equipment, money flow in on the 16th and the 22nd. So, it, it, every one of these, there was some instance of money flow in, but the stocks that are the big movers that are really moving, they're going to appear time after time in these uh, with money flow. Perfect speculator. These are stocks breaking out to a 52 week high or a three and a quarter year high or they're within 5% of that. So these are the characteristics that uh, uh, of the uh, of the leading stocks. I'm not going to do it in this video because I, I don't have time. I don't want it to run long, but I'm going to digest this information and uh, uh, maybe uh, or come up with a filter we can use with some of these characteristics using keywords. And uh, that's going to be the subject of my next video. I'll do that uh, sometime this week. I don't think I'll get it done over the weekend. But uh, uh, what I'm trying to do uh, with this series is show you the power of HGSI, the information that's not available in other programs, and you can't do this. I mean, people are always skipping around to different software programs. I don't. I just stick with this. And I this is why, because I can... Uh, uh, have all these powerful tools that I don't have in other programs and I can make user smart groups with certain characteristics and that's what I'll do. I'll make uh, user smart groups. Before I go, I just thought of something. I want to go into the Or a instant watch list. Uh, here's one right here. What is this? That's, that's NVIDIA. Well, let's use NVIDIA. Uh, let's see. That was back on the 8th. I think I already looked at that one. Let's use a different one. How about PANW? This is on the 9th. 3 6 cross after a pullback. VPA flag. So let's look at. Uh, PANW on the 9th. Okay, here's the 8th. Here's the 9th right here. So it showed up this day, and that was really just the beginning of a nice run here. It didn't show up on the instant watch list, I don't think, the day before uh, setting up. It's not going to catch anything. This just looks for the top 16 stocks. I limited it to 16. So, and I can I can expand that too uh, with uh, user smart groups, and maybe I will. These are things I need to think about and incorporate this. And my ultimate goal with this is to uh, come up with some filters that you can run every day and feel fairly confident that these stocks have all the strong characteristics of a stock that is on the move or has potential 
to uh, really go a great distance. And uh, that's it for this video. Thank you for listening. I went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but uh, I think there's some uh, decent information in here for you to digest.